Okay, I'm about to play some TF2, hopefully, but you're going to hear it in the background. I'm going to actually um, close out because I don't want the TF2 thing to ruin this. But recently I went to um, like a bingo night for a local SRA that at the place I'm going to be moving to. And I don't have any complaints about it. I mean, it was bingo. I suck at bingo, so I wasn't really super th enthralled, but... I mean, that's not their fault. Bingo just is not my game. It's not my game. Um, so there's that. And it, But when I went there, I don't know. It just, a lot of the people that were there were also participants of the program that I'm going to be moving into. And it's sort of like a lot of them are more severely afflicted. Some of them maybe even nonverbal with their disabilities. So it's like, you know, this this is concerning for two reasons. First of all, I'm not saying people shouldn't have um, a chance to succeed if they're severely afflicted by something they can't control. But the thing is, that doesn't, I mean, I don't know. It makes me wonder, like, is this program going to be a fit for me? Because if that's the clientele, I've been in programs like that before where they focus on that clientele that needs certain things that I already know. And I get left behind. You know, it's like they're trying to focus on, oh, well, you need to learn how to learn idioms or you need to learn how to um understand sarcasm it's like but i already know that you know can we focus on things that i don't know like how to socialize how to find a significant other i mean i have one but like that's just hypothetical because like i don't even fucking know how i got one myself um how to find a job how to pay taxes stuff that actually would be useful um and but yet no one ever teaches me that, you know, because they're focused on teaching everyone else the more basic stuff. So it's like, am I going to get left behind? There's also the social aspect of it. Um, first of all, is the social ca aspect of this going to be catering to that group as well and leaving me behind? Because like I there's certain things I like to do and I don't want to be doing things that are like geared towards people who are with the mentality of children, if that makes sense, whether or not they can control it. Like, I mean, I'm not going to be interested with things that are like geared towards children, if that makes sense. And there's also the fact that how am I going to socialize with people who are more severely afflicted? Like, at the end of the day, I need to be around, like, adults, if that makes sense. I need to be around adults. I need to be friends with adults. I've tried being friends with people who are kids mentally. Um, I could make a series of videos listing why that doesn't work. In fact, I probably will. That's how badly it's affected me. It's caused serious trust issues too because like a lot of times they make promises and then they don't keep them and don't you know seem to understand how serious that is and it's like well i can't even trust my own friends who can i trust that's like it's serious problems i also have to point out something that one of the moms there was doing hold up like there was a mom at the program who it was a mom who was there with her son and the son was playing nintendo ds which is fine you know it wasn't exactly the most entertaining event there was a guy that was just like talking intermittently and not much going on for a long time i have to kind of complain about that like if you're gonna have people with disabilities going to your program try and keep it entertaining for them don't just be like don't like waste a half hour not doing much and just announcing things like people don't want to hear that we're not we're not going to a college lecture guys come on and we paid money for this like here we are now entertain us as that song goes but he was playing his DS, and his mom does a lot of the same shit that I, that mine did. Nagging. Like, you know, the bingo game starts, and he's in the middle of a game, and she's immediately like, put it down, we're gonna play, put it down, we're gonna play, come on, put it down, we're gonna play, and repeatedly, and it's like, maybe he needs to just get to a save point. Maybe he didn't hear you the first time because he's focused on the game, which is understandable. I mean, if you guys go to up, if you guys are playing, like, a first-person shooter, and someone comes up to you and asks you a question... Are you going to necessarily answer the question, or are you going to be focused on trying not to get killed by that sniper? You see what I'm saying? So, people don't seem to understand that. They don't seem to respect that, and the nagging is just not okay. There's also the, in my opinion, it's just rude. There's also the, the part where, um, there was one time where she just kept asking him a question, and kept asking him a question. He was, like, focused elsewhere. And she just kept insisting, like, he didn't answer it. Two seconds later, hey, what did you, hey, did you hear this? Two seconds later, didn't hear it. Hey, did you hear this? Just not even giving him time to really think, not even giving him time to, like, say, maybe I need to answer this later. Not picking up that maybe he's preoccupied and doesn't want to answer the question. 
You know, that's a possibility too. Someone doesn't answer a question several times. Maybe they don't want to. And it's one of those things where I've had parents, like, it's just weird to see because that's like what my mom does too. She nags. Like, she'll come up and nag sometimes. She'll insist I answer questions. She'll, like act like, oh, well, I'm, I have a processing delay, but it's like, yeah, but I'm focused on games when you ask the questions. Maybe when I'm not focused on other things would be a good time to do it. Because why would I focus on you if I'm in the middle of a game and I'm about to get shot to death? You know, like, I'd be focused on not dying first. And it just seems like a lot of people don't respect that. I guess there is some good news about it, though. I did get to take a hike to the casino, and they have a poker room. Novel concept. The last two casinos I went to near where I live didn't have that because I guess COVID shut it down. So it's nice to see that there is one that still has a functioning poker room. Um, it has won three no limit, which is a bit higher than I was hoping. But I mean, hey, um, if it's the lowest stake, fish are going to congregate there. So if I can stack them for 300, I guess it's better than 200. Just hope I don't run bad. So that's a good thing. Nice to I mean, I don't know how often be going, but I'm definitely going to be hitting that casino. Yeah. <sighs>